Good day, folks. Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel here in Nashville, Tennessee with your daily devotional. Do enjoy uh, introducing new daily readers and daily devotionals along the way here as we uh, uh, have our devotional together. Uh, today, I'm really excited. I just love the title of this one. It's a collection of writings by Eugene Peterson introducing each of the 66 books of the Bible. Um, it's called Symphony of Salvation. And I, I love that. I, I entitled actually a, a series of uh, Advent uh, Bible studies based on the four canticles that we find in Luke's gospel. I called that the Symphony of Salvation as well. And uh, probably picked it up somewhere along the way from Eugene Peterson. This is, uh, as I say, a 60-day devotional journey through the books of the Bible, although we know there are 66 books in the Bible. But uh, I'll read this uh, first one. I want to read the introduction, though, for you as well. It says here, because the Bible is so famous and revered, many assume that we need experts to explain and interpret it for us. And of course, there are some things that need to be explained. But the first men and women who listened to these words now written in our Bibles were ordinary, everyday working class people. One of the greatest of the early translators of the Bible into English, William Tyndale, said that he was translating so that the boy that driveth the plow would be able to read the scriptures. One well-educated African man who later became one of the most influential Bible teachers in our history, Augustine, was greatly offended when he first read the Bible. Instead of a book cultivated and polished in the literary style he admired so much, he found it full of homespun, earthly stories of plain, unimportant people. He read it in a Latin translation full of slang and jargon. He took one look at what he considered the unspiritual quality of so many of its characters and the everydayness of Jesus, and he contemptuously abandoned it. It was years before he realized that God had not taken the form of a sophisticated intellectual to teach us about highbrow heavenly culture so we could appreciate the finer things of God. When he saw that God entered our lives as a Jewish servant in order to save us from our sins, he started reading the book gratefully and believingly. So that's St. Augustine he's talking about, one of the greatest theological minds of all time. Um, Peterson goes on, some are also surprised that Bible reading does not introduce us to a, quote, nicer, end quote, world. This biblical world is decidedly not an ideal world, the kind we see advertised in travel posters. Suffering and injustice and ugliness are not purged from the world in which God works and loves and saves. Nothing is glossed over. God works patiently and deeply, but often in hidden ways, in the mess of our humanity and history. Ours is not a neat and tidy world in which we are assured that we can get everything under our control. This takes considerable getting used to. There is mystery everywhere. The Bible does not give us a predictable cause and effect world in which we can plan our careers and secure our futures. It is not a dream world in which everything works out according to our adolescent expectations. There is pain and poverty and abuse at which we cry out in indignation. You can't let this happen. For most of us, it takes years and years and years to exchange our dream world for this real world of grace and mercy, sacrifice and love, freedom and joy, the God-saved world. Yet another surprise is that the Bible does not flatter us. It is not trying to sell us anything that promises to make life easier. It doesn't offer secrets to what we often think of as prosperity or pleasure or high adventure. The reality that comes into focus as we read the Bible has to do with what God is doing in a saving love that includes us and everything we do. This is quite different from what our sin-stunted 
and culture-cluttered minds imagine. But our Bible reading does not give us access to a mail-order catalog of idols from which we can pick and choose to satisfy our fantasies. Mm. The Bible begins with God speaking creation and us into being. (laughs) It continues with God entering into personalized and complex relationships with us, helping and blessing us, teaching and training us, correcting and disciplining us, loving and saving us. This is not an escape from reality, but a plunge into more reality, a sacrificial but altogether better life all the way. That is Eugene Peterson's introduction to his 60-day devotional uh, journey through the books of the Bible called Symphony of Salvation. I don't know about you, but my appetite is wet. We'll be reading from this one again in the coming days. Let me close us in a word of prayer today. Thank you, Father, for your word. Uh, You are surprising in so many ways to us. Um, So come, uh, Holy Spirit, move in our hearts and minds. Hmm. Convince us of what is true. Convict us of our sin. Conform us into the image of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen and amen. Have a great day. Daily Devotions with Pastor Jim Thomas is a resource of the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee. If you find this daily devotional beneficial, leave a review and share it with friends and family. For more resources or to support our ministry, visit our website, thevillagechapel.com. Artwork for this podcast by Kim Thomas. Music by Phil Kagey.